Our Bible word is 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 9. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. So this is Apostle Paul writing to the Christians in Thessalonica. And let's look at the historical context of 1 Thessalonians. Paul was on his second missionary journey. He went through Asia, Asia Minor, he went all the way up to Troas, and then he crossed the sea to Neapolis, and from there he went to Philippi. There he taught, and of course was eventually chased out of the city, and then he came to Thessalonica. And Paul established his congregation in Thessalonica around the year 50, we can read about that in Acts 17. And Luke says that the church there included some Jews and some God worshippers. In other words, they were Gentiles who attached themselves to the synagogue. And there were also some prominent women. But if you actually read 1 Thessalonians, Paul must have been very active amongst artisans and those people who didn't attach themselves to the synagogue as well because he actually says there in chapter 1 verses 9 that they returned to God from idols. So Paul must have been very heavily involved in other activity outside the synagogue to convert gent the local Gentiles of Thessalonica. And they were artisans because they worked with their hands. And the congregation was also established under difficult circumstances, Paul describes in his letter. Of course, he was hounded and harassed and persecuted by opponents also in the city. So he's writing to these Gentiles. And after Paul went to Thessalonica, he, of course, he was also chased from every city that he went. So he went all by, down by himself all the way to Athens. And there he issued instructions for, for Timothy and Silas to join him there. And when they reached, arrived or reached him there in Athens, he sent them up again. So he sent Timothy to Thessalonica. And he also, if we may infer, he sent Silas to Philippi. And then they eventually returned to him where he already reached Corinth. And then Timothy must have given him news also and developments or news of developments in the congregation. So Paul wrote 1 Thessalonians, around the year 51 from Corinth, based on this report that is received from Timothy. And there are several issues that Paul addressed in the letter. The first thing is that Paul wanted to maintain contact with them. And he's concerned for their spiritual growth and well-being. Because Paul was only there for a short while, a few weeks at most, and there must have been a very special fondness and bond between Paul and the Christians in Thessalonica because he, he fondly remembers them if you read the first two chapters of Thessalonians and he, he recalls his ministry he had with them. So Paul wants to maintain contact with him and he wants them to grow spiritually. The second big issue is that the Thessalonians were experiencing persecution and they were treated badly and harassed by their fellow countrymen. And Paul says, well, you're experiencing similar things like the Christians in Judea are experiencing from their fellow Jews over there. And the third issue is that there were some who refused to work. And the exact reason why they didn't want to work is not known. Maybe they thought, well, the coming of Jesus is so soon, there's no need to work. Or <laughs> maybe they were lazy. Who knows? Some just refused to work. And Paul tells them, no, you must work, because I've also set an example for you. If we go to chapter 2, verses 9, Paul writes there, For you remember, brethren, our labor and toil, for laboring night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you, we preach to you the gospel of God. So Paul is telling them, when I was with you, I worked with my own hands. And Paul's addressing these other artisans. And he probably, when he taught them the gospel, they were probably sitting in the room somewhere working. 
working their trades, whatever it may be. So Paul is admonishing these oaks who don't want to work, work. And remember my example, I worked when I was there with you. And another reason Paul wrote this letter is also to address issues of sexual immorality. And there was especially adultery going on. You know, he was addressing the men. You know, he's saying, leave the wives of, the, of your brothers alone. So there was this problem that Paul addressed. Well, you must remember back for the pagan world, there was no strong norms in terms of morality. So when they came to Christianity or the Christian faith, they now, their behavior was, no, you must do it right now. You can't just carry on what you've been doing before. You are children of God and you must behave in a proper way. And the next thing Paul addressed was issues around the parousia, or that's the return of Jesus. There were some who were concerned about some of their fellow believers who died and they were wondering, are they going to miss out now when Jesus returns? Are they going to miss out? Are they going to miss this? And Paul says, no. The dead in Christ will rise first. And also part and parcel of this is that they must be prepared for the parousia, for the return of Jesus, that Paul also addresses. So these are the main issues that Paul addresses. He addresses mainly artisans, people who worked with their hands, who came from a pagan background. And now, of course, they are immature still, uh, they must abandon their pagan ways, their, their previous lives that they lived, and their faith and their understanding in the Christian context needs to be strengthened. And that's why Paul writes his letter to, to them. So now if we narrow in on our textual unit, that is chapter 4 verses 9 to 12. And that is on brotherly love and self-sufficiency. So Paul just addressed the issue of sexual morality and now he addresses them on, especially these people who do not want to work. If you go to verse 9, he says, But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. So, uh, what's this issue between love and brotherly love, etc.? But <laughs> the main issue here is also work, that they must remain active. In verse 10, and indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more. So they are engaged in love with other Christians in this province of Macedonia. That's where Thessalonica was. But now comes the crux of the issue in verse 11. That you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we command you. So brotherly love is expressed by not being a burden on others. You cannot form part of the Christian fellowship and think that everybody must just take care of you. You cannot stop working. And Paul is also saying here, you cannot live like this because outsiders, you have also have a responsibility, the image you create towards outsiders, they look at you. If you go to verse 12, that you make walk properly towards those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. In other words, don't be a burden on the congregation. Don't be a burden to society. Work with your own hands. You cannot just stop working because you now are a Christian or for whatever reason that they stopped working. So part of this brotherly love is don't be a burden to the congregation. Contribute, live your own quiet life. Look after yourselves. Be self-sufficient. And also don't create a bad impression to others outside. Because that also communicates certain values to other people. You, you guys are lazy. You just want to sit around all day doing nothing. So this unit on brotherly love and self-sufficiency, it's don't sit back and do nothing. Occupy your hands, work, contribute. Don't become a burden to society or to other believers.